All right, it is time to talk about some design problems that I see out there. So if you are currently working on a bathroom, this one's for you. Hello my dears, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com and today we are going to be discussing the 10 most common mistakes that I see in bathroom designs and I hope you're not making them. This is a really important topic because bathroom remodeling, bathroom makeovers are the second most expensive room that you will run into if you're working on a house. So kitchens of course are the worst because counters are atrocious, cabinets are very expensive, and you've got appliances and water and electrical all coming together in one space. So a $30,000 remodel on a kitchen is kind of bare bones. You also can easily spend 30,000 on a bathroom if you are going to hire out tile work and those kinds of things. The reason why I would put bathrooms as second most complicated, most expensive type of makeover or remodel is that you again are dealing with water, you're dealing with ventilation, so the fan pulling the steam out, you're dealing with lighting, and anytime you've got electrical and water near each other, there's some serious rules about that with building codes. You've gotta deal with drainage and you've got sewer. Huge, we haven't even talked about tiling or those kinds of things that are really difficult for sometimes for people. This would be the time to add a contractor to the mix if you are not comfortable with this level of a DIY. This would be money well spent if you need to get someone in there to even just look over your ideas and say yes or no, right? So the other common area that I see hired out is tile. Especially if you, you've got the inset shelving and things that you're gonna do within the shower. You might want some help on that. Okay. And before I jump into my 10 common mistakes, some of these things that I'm talking about, I feel like do not necessarily apply to powder rooms. That is gonna be my huge exception today. Sometimes powder rooms, you can do really crazy things in, and they're really fun to redo because you can push the limits. You've got basically a little tiny jewel box that you're working with. So I love this one with the rich green walls. Normally I would say do not do green in a bathroom because it puts this hue on your skin that makes you not look very healthy. But I love this rich sort of Edwardian masculine style bathroom. This one also is very dark. I try not to do dark bathrooms because they are the place where you go to get clean. So white is gonna be my first choice in a bathroom. But this is a powder room so people are just using it as a, a guest usually or just a quick hand wash, you know, not really getting ready in this room, not needing to shower and things. So I love this dark bathroom and I think that they balance the navy blue here with all the mirrors going on. Okay, that being said, let's dive in. So number one, you've got to get samples. You cannot skip this step. So most places offer samples. So even Home Depot, you can buy a subway tile or whatever you're looking at. You can spend just a few dollars, $5 or something for samples. And I mean, I would budget a couple hundred dollars if you have to, to get your samples in. But you need to look at everything. So you need your wood, your flooring. Wood flooring is one of my favorites. You need your tile, even buy a washcloth. Anything that you can possibly put together on a small scale, definitely paint swatches. All right, number two, we gotta talk about flooring, and I see this a lot. This is an example of not understanding classic flooring choices, okay? So this is a big no-no. To ever put two wood floors side by side that are not identical, it instantly screams we're in the middle of a remodel and we're not done. You might be in the middle of a remodel, but this is not a final solution. So all it says is old floor, new floor. And that's not what you're going for. You're going for a new floor look. So do not mix your wood floors. Here's another example of 
old 70s vanity and then new vinyl plank flooring. So they tried to update their 70s bathroom and all they did was make it look like they tried. There was just a wannabe remodel and they didn't quite hit a home run. If this were my bathroom and I knew that we weren't gonna redo the cabinets, I would just go with the cabinets and I would probably paint them a really amazing turquoise. I would maybe find an incredible Moroccan tile and I would treat this bathroom as a bohemian style. 70s style is very bohemian. So I think that would have been a better direction is just if you can't beat them, join them. Sometimes you gotta do that. And this would have made a great bohemian bathroom. Another thing with flooring, which I don't even want to give this a number because it's so bad. I just can't even believe I'm saying it, but do not ever put carpet in a bathroom. If you could see what is microscopically happening under that carpet <laughs> with mildew and germs, you would never feel like you were actually becoming clean in that room. So no carpet in the bathrooms. Do not mix the woods. And... There's really, in my mind, two solid solutions for bathroom flooring, which would be, of course, continuing the wood floor that was already throughout the house, that will always work, or getting a really classic tile. My two favorite sources for tile are clay tile, C-L-E, clay tile, and I love bed rosians. All right, that, that brings us to my third common mistake I see. It is having too much fun with trendy tiles. So it's really tempting, especially if you just really hated the bathroom tile that you're dealing with. But realtors will tell you when people come in and buy homes, the first thing that people will say is, oh my gosh, that bathroom tile has to go. And the problem is bathroom tile, tile in general, lasts for a long time, a hundred years, easy, right? So the chances of a trendy tile being popular for 50 or 100 years, it's just not gonna happen. So, so tile is not where I tell people to enjoy the trends. Here's an example of a bathroom that I think went too far with trendy tile. Now subway tile is classic. It also has been trendy, but the subway tile with this Moroccan tile with the wallpaper, I think that's wallpaper, with the shiplap or the beadboard on the ceiling, it just went too far and it's all it's already looking dated to me so be extremely careful with your tile please think very classic with your tile so the most classic is going to be Carrera marble and subway tile those are going to be safe and they're going to be safe for a long 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 time not going to bother re not going to affect resale or anything and i love playing with trends as much as the next girl but i i want to do that with accessories and with paint and a little side note, penny tile is my very favorite, just gorgeous. I love it in showers because the ratio from grout to tile is really high. There's a lot of grout, which gives you more traction. And you can also do these cute designs where you actually have a framed out design with your penny tile. Very classic. Okay, this brings me to the next mistake. Number four, if you do use Carrera marble, you need to understand that it has a blue undertone. Undertones are really important. In fact, this is something I dive deep into in my behind the scenes group. I have a design group that I only open twice a year and we are opening this Tuesday. If you wanna get on the wait list to join that group, this is the kind of stuff that we're talking about all the time in that group. And you can learn more about it in the description below. So blue undertones. You've got to respect those if you're dealing with Carrera marbles. So your grays have to have a little bit of blue in them. You can't go green and you can't go purple. Those are the three colors that are in grays, green, purple, or blue. You've got to cho choose a bluish undertone. And if you want to go pure white, you don't want to go cream with it because suddenly it will trigger the blue in that Carrera marble and it'll look, it'll look really blue. I suggest Sherwin-Williams High Reflective White. It's a no-brainer white color to use with Carrera marble and the the comparative paint for a Benjamin Moore would be Chantilly lace. Number five, deciding not to have a tub in your house. 
I get it. I get that some people are really grossed out by the thought of sitting in water and thinking you're getting clean. But I know many designers that say just put the tub in anyway. You don't even ever have to use it. First of all, they're beautiful. Second of all, the resale value is, is really there for a tub because people want them for their children. So I would do your best to incorporate incorporate a tub somehow in your bathroom, at least one in your house. Number six, and I know that I am going to break some hearts with this and I'm sorry, but I need to tell you that barn doors are out in many parts of the country, on their way out in the other parts of the country. But it's not that I have a hatred for barn doors. I just need to talk about them in this context today because in a bathroom scenario, you have issues with airflow, with humidity, with smells. And a barn door, a sliding barn door, isn't gonna cut it for a bathroom. So they can be really cute, but that's a mistake. I think to use them on a bathroom, I would recommend a pocket door instead. If you're really trying to save on space, that is gonna seal better, a little better. Number seven, lighting. Lighting is, oh gosh, where do we start with lighting? You need a lot of it. So there's formulas for how much wattage, they don't call it wattage anymore, but we're moving more to the LED lights, so it's now called lumens. There are some really good formulas, another thing I talk about in my behind the scenes group, but you can just plug in your square footage and into the type of room that you're trying to figure out. So kitchens have the highest lumen needs. Bathrooms are the second highest because you're trying to be clean in these places and you need to be able to see really well what's on your face, what's in your teeth, whatever. So when in doubt, add the extra lumen for your bathrooms. So this is an example of a mistake. There's beautiful aspects about this bathroom. That one bulb is just not gonna cut it, even though it's in front of a mirror. There's another thing I don't like about this, but that's gonna be number eight. So let's go ahead and talk about number eight. I think it's really important to include sconces in a bathroom. Here's why. We used to do these overhead vanity lights, usually three huge bulbs, really bright, and then they hit the mirror, and then they're even brighter. Okay, light up here hitting your face creates shadows and micro shadows. Every little pore now has a shadow. So you do not look your best. You've got dark circles, you've got like more sag here. All your pores are showing. The position of the lights in the bathroom by the mirror are very, very important. So I love sconces. I would choose sconces any day over the bar lights. Hands down, get sconces either side of the mirror. And then the position of the sconces is also important. So here's an example where, okay, yes, good. These people got their sconces but what the heck are they thinking with the positions here? This is gonna create lights like this. I mean, have you ever been with your friends as a kid with the flashlight going like this and telling your ghost stories at night? That's the effect to a lesser degree. That's what you're gonna get from these sconces because of how they are positioned. These ones, I can't really tell because I'm not in this bathroom. These ones may be a little bit high. So here's, here's the rule of thumb, and it's not like I can just throw out a number because it has to deal with you, and it has to deal with your height. And you know, if your husband's six foot four, you might wanna average your two heights to get this right. But I like to put the bulbs of the sconces right above my head. So if you have shades, the bottom of the little shades, or the bottom of the bulbs is gonna hit the top of your head. That will feel like a little bit of sunshine on you have this little soft light coming down on you without creating the dark shadows. So it's the most flattering position for the lights in the bathroom. And you know what? We could all use as much help as possible when we're trying to get our makeup right. So this one is actually my bathroom and I did pay attention to those types of measurements when we installed these sconces. All right, number nine, we're almost done, but number nine is storage, not enough storage. There are a lot of storage needs in a bathroom. So I'm gonna give you some of my favorite solutions. I like to store things that look 
good. A lot of times that means taking it out of its package and putting it in, say, like a glass jar. So here's some just plain ivory soap, toilet paper in this wire basket. Maybe you don't have a lot of drawer space, so you actually display your toothbrushes like this in a really pretty toothbrush holder that's slash wall decoration for a clawfoot tub, which I have a similar solution going on in my bathroom. You can add a little, I think they're called tub caddies, but you can make them really easily. So just four boards here put together. So you could store bath needs that way. If you have maybe a pedestal sink and no storage underneath, you can always add a ticking curtain or something with a tension rod. It's very French looking, always really charming and sweet. And then I love a good old fashioned medicine cabinet. You can buy vintage ones that are oh, so on point. I love this one here, the old hinges, the cute little knob. And then to maximize your wall space, get more towels in, I suggest hooks as opposed to towel bars. And they're just I just feel like it makes the towels look prettier. It makes them drape prettier. You can see the edges better. This is actually one of my bathrooms. This was an old doll curio that we painted white and put it back in this sort of awkward corner space and got a lot more storage that way. I did need to pay attention. I mean, you can see I've got, I really thought about which baskets to use and I have little wooden crates and glass jars and things. So be collecting those things so you can add cotton balls and washcloths and extra things like that. You can always go vertical. A lot of people forget to use the space above their toilet or even um, overhead. And then doors, um, the back side of your door, you can hang a shoe organizer and keep refills and things in there or inside of cabinet doors. So there is a lot of unused storage space that I see in bathrooms and it's worth rethinking if that's what you need. Okay, number 10, too sterile. A lot of bathrooms just look too sterile and they need to be warmed up and given a little bit of human touch. My two favorite ways are to one, bring in plants and they can be faux. I mean, these ones are probably real here with the window, but if you don't have a window in your bathroom, just get some faux plants. I love the Ikea plants. Michael's has some good ones you can put together. And then just really interesting details. So. I mean, most people don't even think about a really pretty handle on the toilet or something cute on the door that says vacant or some French little sign or something. Add those little finishing touches. Change out your hardware or something. My favorite source for hardware is called D Lawless Hardware. You can get them online and they just have anything you could ever want. So I hope that that narrows down some questions that you've been having. You feel a little bit more confident about your own bathroom makeovers going on. And if you want more information like this, be sure to join my behind the scenes group. We also do live meetups. We have an optional Bible study. It's a really great group. It's actually the highlight of my job. So hopefully I will see you in that group. If not, I will see you next week in my next video. We are heading to Round Top. Actually, my behind the scenes group, several of the students are going. We're going to Round Top, the antique show in Texas. We're going to Magnolia. I'm gonna put it all together in a video for you next week, so be sure to check that out when it goes live. All right, thank you so much for watching, and if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hit the bell, and I will see you next week.